Okay, let's start our lesson today. We will only go over linear regression today, and um, you will need linear regression only for your final. This will not be in your test four, not in test four. Your test four will all be hypothesis testing. Okay, now uh, let's take a look first on our scheduling to make sure that we, you know what we are uh, uh, anticipating. So today, Monday, May the 24th, we will do linear regression and it is a short one. I don't even think it will be one hour. Now on Wednesday, the 26, we'll have test four. Now remember I told you in my uh, last week's recording, last week's uh, lecture uh, discussion that test four will be a lot of writing, right? So uh, I will start the test a bit earlier, like half an hour earlier, and we will end the test half an hour earlier. So in the past, we start at 4.30 to 6.30, right? That's in the past. Now we will start from four o'clock, half an hour earlier, until seven o'clock. Okay, so get prepared to uh, check in like around 3.50, 3.55. Uh, three hours should be more than enough though. Three hours should be more than enough. Uh, but the thing is like the seven o'clock one, I cannot uh, extend it at all because my class, my calculus two class actually starts like 7.20. And uh, I told them they can start checking in at 7, uh, 7.10. Okay, so seven o'clock, you are done. If possible, 7.10, you already submit your test. Okay, that's for this Wednesday. Now, and then next week, Monday, no class. That's Memorial Day. And the final week starts on June the 1st. Now your final is actually on the week after that Memorial Day. So Monday, the June the 6th, that's your final. The material will be from four to seven. I mean, the test will be from four to seven, just like uh, your test four. And where, what should you study? Study all my tests one, two, three, four. Material topics. That will be study from my tests one, two, three, four. Of course, my tests and the previous semester's tests. And don't forget, we also have linear regression. Okay. <clears throat> now in between uh, this Monday and the final, if you have any question, you can send me an email. Very likely, uh, I will be available on Wednesday June the second during our class time. Class time to be my office hour, like to answer questions. Okay. If you have any question. But you need to send me an email though. Okay, you need to send me an email. I mean, I can just go, I can just stay on, on Zoom, but you know, it's like if nobody's there, I don't really like to have the, the headset on my head uh, just to stand by all the time. You know, I will, I will try to, to be on Zoom so that you don't need to wait to, you don't need to email me and set appointment first during our class time. I will try, but it will be nice if you let me know in advance so that I have the, the I, I know that, hey, you know what, somebody will be there, you know, okay. 
uh, I'll be, uh, to be honest with you, I'll be happier if somebody there, okay? Otherwise, I still need to be, I, I still want to be available, but I just feel like, uh, will anybody be here? What happened if I need to go to restroom, you know? <laughs> okay, so uh, yes, these are our schedule. This is our schedule. This is what we'll do today. This is your test on Wednesday. Please be aware with the time. I try to give you extra time. So the test is supposed to be two hours. I make it three hours so that you have more time to actually write your work uh, in, an, in a neat way. And then the Monday next week, we don't have class. Okay, because of Memorial Day. The Wednesday uh, of next week, uh, that's supposed to be our test, right? But there's a rule. There's a rule in our uh, at our school that if the class is evening class, like afternoon evening class, then the final should be held at the second day of that meeting. Uh, how to say it? at the second day of the final week. The second day of the class on the of the final week. So uh, our second day of the final week actually falls on Monday, this, uh, June the 7th, okay? Now the final will be from four to seven and the topics will be everything you learn plus, linear, plus lin linear regression. Now, the linear regression part that I will ask you will be quite straightforward and it will be based on calculator, okay? What are those? Uh, we will be finding linear regression equation finding the coefficient of correlation and coefficient of determination, all of them using TI-84. And then after that, we will use the linear regression equation to find the residual of a data point and some explanation on when is it appropriate to use that linear regression equation. Okay, now then after I'm done with two examples uh, to get this, then I will go further into the technical explanation. Okay, yeah, but the technical explanation I believe already well uh, described, discussed in uh, my lecture video. Okay, so if you happen to skip that lecture video, you are actually fine. The last lecture video, the one that you're supposed to watch for May the 24th, right? Let me show you which one. one that you're supposed to watch for today announcement five you're supposed to watch this one okay may the 24th there are two videos to watch okay but uh if you want to if you happen not to do that not to watch that then that's fine you can just uh, follow this. So I promise you, I only ask this kind of question. I will only ask this kind of question in your final regarding linear regression. Okay, I try to make it super easy for you. Now, so let's see how to find linear regression equation. Uh, here's a sample problem. A pediatrician wants to determine the relation that exists between a child's height and the hair circumference. Now she randomly selects 11 children from her practice, measure their heights and had circumstances, uh, had circumstances and obtains the following data. Now we will first find the linear regression line. Like basically, basically it's about what equation can we use to, uh, can we use to see the ratio to relate the height and had circumstance, had circumference. Okay, in other words, uh, in other words, if X is the height and the Y is the head circumference, can we find Y equals to MX plus B? Okay. Can we find Y equals to MX plus B? By the way, that's linear equation. Okay. 
that's linear equation. Now, later on, we will use this linear regression line, equation line, to predict a child's uh, head circum uh, circumference using his or her height. Okay? Now, that's what we will do. Now, let's take a look on how to use our calculator. I will plug in all this data and the way we plug in the data will be very similar to uh, the way we plug in uh, the data for match pair. Okay, for match pair. So uh, let's start. Hold on, why I cannot clear this? Oh, what happened? Hold on, what happened? Seems like it's stuck. Give me a second, okay? Hey, what happened? I cannot plug in it. Huh, strange. Am I at the right view right now? Yeah, I'm correct already. But why my calculator is not working? Let me close it down. Mm -hmm. What happened with my calculator? Uh oh. Hey, it's okay with that. Hmm. Hey, what happened? Something doesn't work. Hey, <laughs> give me a second. Let me stop the recording first. So I reset my, my calculator. So all the programs I have before the inverse, is it inverse Kai? In first Kai, I need to program that again, but that's not too hard. That's not too hard. Okay, uh, I will key in the data. So I go to stats, edit. It's already clear up, I believe. Now then I will plug those numbers in, in this order. Okay, so the first one is, the first one is 27.75, enter 24.5, enter 25.5, enter 26, enter 25, enter 27.75, enter 26.5, enter 27, enter 26.75, 26.75, 27.5. So there are 11 children, right? So the 11 heights. Now then I go on with L2, the second list, which is the head circumference. That will be 17.5. 17 17.3 16.9 17.6 17.3 17.5 17.3, 17.5, and the last one, 17.5. Okay, so we already input all the data. Remember they have to be in pairs, okay? Now then, 
If we want to find the linear regression equation, you go to stats. Maybe I write it down. So uh, give me a second. Few mm, not always in front. Um, I want to change this. What is my view? Not always at the front. Okay. Now then. We will go to, so first you go to stat, add it, and then input data. Input data set in pairs. Okay, the way I showed you earlier. Now and then for you to find the linear regression, you go to stats. Let's see, you go to stat, calculate lin rec ax plus b. Calculate, then you choose lin rec for linear regression, ax plus b. Now then it will ask you which list of data, which data set that you will put in. Now here the X list will be L1, Y list will be L2. And then calculate. Okay, uh, there's something, hold on. There are some informations that I, I would like to show also. I forgot how to do that. Uh, give me a second. Uh, is it in the mode? Oh, yeah. I need to go to mode and then go to stat diagnosis and then turn it on. Turn it on. Okay, that way then they will give us more than just linear regression equation. Yeah, they give us this. Okay, now then from here you see uh, to answer part A, what is the linear regression equation? The linear equation requ regression equation is y hat. Now that represents the predicted y, okay, or the expected y is given by ax. Now the A is 0 0.18273 X plus B 12.49317. Okay. Now if the height is X, then the expected head circumference will be Y hat. Okay, you see that from here. You see that from here. Okay. Now then let's see part B. Interpret the slope and y-intercept. So the y-intercept, the slope first 0 0.18273 means what? Uh, for, for every one inch increase in height we expect 0 0.18273 inch in 
had increased, inch increase. in head circumference okay that's the slope now then part c use regression equation to predict the head circumference of a child who is 25 inches tall. So part C, part C, when X equals to 25, what is the expected head circumference, right? Okay, what is the predicted? So Y head equals to 0 0.18273 times 25 plus 12.49317. Then you use your calculator to compute that. Okay, 0.18273 times 25 plus 12.49317. It's 16.51323. So y hat is 16.51323. That's the expected circumference of head of a child with 25 inch tall. That's for part C. Now part D, compute the residual based on the observed head circumference of the 25 inch tall uh, child in the table. Now in this table, we have one person, one child with that height. Okay, so what is the residue? What is the residue? So part D, we have a data point. Data point that we will use is 25, 25 inch, inch for the height. And the head circumference is 16.9 uh, inch. Okay, now then what is the residue? Residual. Uh, residual is the actual y value minus the predicted y value. So in this case, that will be, in this case, that will be 16.9 minus 16.51323. That is 0 0.38677 inch. That's the residual. Uh, you can say residual is the difference between the observed value minus the predicted value. That's residual. Okay, that's for part D. Part E, draw the least square regression line on the scattered diagram. Uh, I don't think I will do that. I mean, I, I will not do that. I will not ask you that. But let's take a look if I possibly draw it here. Uh, let me see. Stats. I wonder if I can draw it here. Is there any way to draw it? Mm. No, it's not that one. I, I honestly forgot how to how to plot it. So I know it's that it has something to do with this. Boom. And then this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And then from there I graph it. 
odd one. Huh. I have that correctly. Maybe uh, let me use this one for now. Yeah, I need to find out how to how to make it appear here. So maybe it's still on the window. Ah, I think it has something to do with my window. to figure out the zero twenty maybe I make it ah still no uh, the x should be from minimum is 20 the maximum is let's make it 30 will that better now oh yeah uh -huh. yeah yeah because I need to fix the window so let's make the window even closer so I start from 24 to 28 okay and then oh what am i doing where's the window and then the y minimum is 16 point the smallest one is 16.9 the highest one is 17.5 let me make it like this. The x scale is 0 0.5, means the grid will be every 0 0.5, and the y scale will be 0 0.1. Oh, I have some data up there that's not visible. Go back to the window, make it. 17.8 here and let's make it 0.2 here yeah so that these are how the data being scattered okay now if i want to input the regression line here let me let me screenshot this first okay let me screenshot this first now Regression line is the line, uh, let's say is this line here. Oops, that's way too high. Let's say this is the regression, linear regression line. Okay, now that's the line that basically we can use to predict if we are given the height then we will be able to approximate the head circumference. Okay, that's what linear regression for, okay, to help us predicting. Okay, now, the thing is, so what is residual? What is residual? Residual means the following. Suppose uh, earlier we have 16.9, right? Okay, let's say this is 16.9 here. Now, according to my, according to our linear regression, this is uh, the head circumference supposed to be, yet this is the actual head circumference. Okay, now the residual is actually, is actually the difference here. The difference, the distance from the actual data to the predicted data. That's what uh, residual means. Okay, that's what residual means. Okay, this is a scattered plot. Now, we're supposed to do the scattered plot 
before we start doing the linear regression. Why? Because it is possible the data we have does not, uh, is not well predicted by a line, a linear regression, maybe quadratic, maybe cubic, maybe periodic regression. Okay, so scattered plot is actually the first thing we're supposed to do. And we kind of like, we, we should be able to see, hey, you know what? Uh, this seems to be that uh, the taller that child and the head circumference seems to be increasing. Then we start doing the linear regression. Okay, that's what we're supposed to do. The scattered plot plot supposed to be done first. Okay, but that's actually something we will do uh, much later and I don't have time to do that. Uh, that's for part E, the, draw the least squared regression line on the scattered uh, diagram. Notice that two children are 26.75 tall. This guy here and this guy here. Okay. One has 17.3 inches has circumference and the other one has 17.5. Now, how can that be? Why not? Uh, well, linear regression equation is only to predict and gives the expected Had circumference based on the height. In other words, this is prediction. This is not always true. However, uh, even though we say that's prediction, uh, therefore, uh, we will not be accurate. It is possible that we have two possible outcomes for the same height, but uh, that prediction is actually accurate enough such that we don't say, well, you know what, 26.7, then the head circumference may be 30 inches. No, no, from here we see that uh, it is approximately 17.3, 17.5. Yes, they are off, uh, but our Y prime, or Y hat will give us a good guide, okay? Now, will it be reasonable to use least squares regression to predict health uh, circumference of a child who is 32 inches tall? The answer is no. Why not? Here's the reason. So part G, part G. The data for X actually starts from this minimum will be, the minimum is 24.5. The maximum is 27.75. Data for X ranges from 24.5 to 27.75. Okay, now, so we will, we can use this linear regression equation only when the x, the height in this case, is within this interval, is in this interval. We call that interpolate. We call that interpolate. So we have that linear regression line, right? Okay. Let's say that's the linear regression line. Then if you have any data in between, then you can use that linear regression line, okay? In between, interpolate. We do not use linear regression to extrapolate. We do not assume, hey, you know what? This linear regression line will continue increasing such that we can use that for a child who is 32 uh, inches tall. No, we cannot. That's abusive of a uh, linear regression, okay? Since the data we have only from 24.5 to 27.75, then 
uh, the only x in this case the height that we can use uh, to uh, predict will be in this interval only well it's okay if it is a little bit off let's say 24 it's reasonable okay 28 inches that's still reasonable but 32 is way too far 32 is way too far okay you know that at some point uh, i mean we all agree that at some point uh, our head circumference actually stopped growing even though we still get taller okay yeah, so how do we use this uh, how do we use that uh, linear regression line only when the x is in the original in the interval we are given okay now furthermore what are these r squared and r what are these that's not uh, something they asked in 4.1, but they asked that in 4.2 or 4.3. Now, R represent correlation coefficient. Now, R supposed to be between negative 1 to 1. Okay, if you get R other than that outside of that interval, then something wrong. Okay, with the following rule if R is positive, means the X and Y are positively correlated. means if x increases, then y increases. So in this case, you see the, the r is uh, 0 0.911, right? OK, 0 0.911 means it is positive, right? It means it's positive. Then if the child grow taller, then we expect the head circumference will also increase. You see what I mean? Okay, now if the R is negative, if the R is negative means X and Y are negatively correlated. which means if one variable increases, then the other variable decreases. Okay, now the stronger, as absolute of R closer to, gets closer to, one in other words if you see a number line let's say this is negative one this is one and this is zero uh, the closer it is to positive one or the closer it is to negative one then that is strong correlation okay so for the yellow color that's strong correlation Okay, now, and it is, let's say, between 0 .0 0 0.4 to 0 0.7, that's weak correlation. And if it is, let's say, between negative 0 0.3 to 0 0.3, we can say nearly no correlation.
Now we need to go to chapter toward the end of chapter four and something in chapter 12, as I remember, or 13, for us to decide if that correlation is weak, strong, or not. Okay, but we can say the following. We can say the following. Uh, R squared, that's coefficient of determination. Coefficient of determination basically tells us the portion of y that is due to x. It's kind of like hard words to explain, but uh, think of it this way, like, like in this, what we have here, R squared is 83%, 0 0.83, okay, which means that uh, eighty-three percent of head circumference is due to is explainable by the height. Okay, now the higher the R square, the closer it is to one, then the stronger the correlation, the stronger the effect of the height to head circumference. Okay, now all I want to ask you is later on is uh, what is the coefficient of determination? What is correlation coefficient? All you need to know is like, well, the first one, uh, correlation coefficient is the R, coefficient of determination is R square. Okay, now uh, how to use those, uh, you can read the book. They put this section, this, this topic in chapter four. So in some sense, they do expect you to memorize a lot of terminology and how to use them. Okay, but a lot of memorization uh, to the point that I don't even want to explain that. It's just too much. It's just too much, especially at the end of the semester, right? At the end of a semester uh, to explain those as like, no, it's too much. Um, if you want me to go to to be very very technical, of course I can, you know. But uh, I think it's really already already beyond uh, your level. Okay, I rather just teach you how to use how to find linear regression equation, and how to use that. When to use that, when it is not appropriate to do that. Okay. Now let's see question number two, example number two. Now we have a weight of a car versus miles per gallon. Now an engineer wants to determine how the weight of a car, in this case X, affects the gas mileage. Okay, we do expect that the heavier the car, then the lower the gas mileage. Okay, now the following data represent the weights of various domestic cars and their miles per gallon in the city for 2015 model year. So we have this information here. Okay, let's do it. Quick, clear. I will put in the data. Oh, I still have things here. So let me clear that first, clear list, I will clear list one and list two. Now I will input the data. In list one, four, seven, two, four. That's the first one. And then four, zero, zero, six, 3097, three, five, five, five. Four zero two nine three nine three four three two four two two 
Three five three zero three eight two three. Is that how many data? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I have ten data. Now let's see the mileage. This is seventeen, eighteen, twenty two. 19, 19, 19 again, 24, 26, 19, 18. So I key in the data. Okay, now I get the linear, calculate the linear regression. This one, list two. This is what I get. So part A, what is the linear regression line? Treating weight as explanatory, that's the X. And response, that's the Y. So Y had the predicted response, the predicted miles per gallon is AX plus B, negative 0 0.004676. Seven six. Let's call that eight x plus thirty seven point three five six eight nine. Okay. Interpret the slope and y intercept if appropriate. Okay. The slope first. The slope is negative zero point zero zero four six eight means. For every increase, every increase, uh, I think I should say one for every one pound increase, one pound increase in weight, the the MPG will decrease by 0 0.00468 MPG on average. And we know the heavier the car, the more gas it takes just to move that car. Okay, that's why I hope you notice that uh, when you drive carpool, it will take slightly more gas compared to if you drive alone. Okay, uh, it will take slightly more gas compared to if you drive alone. Now, part C, a Cadillac CTS, uh, do we have that here? No. Three, six, four, nine. So the X is three, six, four, nine gets 20 miles per ga gallon. Is the miles per gallon of a CTS above average or below average for cars of this weight? So let's compute. So what is the Y hat? Y hat for 3649 weight, negative 0 0.00468 times 3649 plus 37.35689. Let's see what's the result. So negative 0 0.00468 
times 3649 plus 37.35689. That should be 20.27957. 20.27957. 20 Okay, now that's the predicted, that's the predicted miles per gallon. Now the fact that Y is only 20, it means that's below the prediction, right? That's below the prediction, below the average. In other words, if the, the car weight is 3,649, then we expect the mileage to be 20.28 miles per gallon. Okay, now apparently here it's less than that. But it, I believe it has something to do with the way they round these miles per gallon though. Okay, usually they round it to one decimal place. Okay, usually they round it to one decimal place. Okay, now part D, will it be reasonable to use the least squares regression line is it reasonable to use this regression line to predict the mileage of a Toyota Prius, which is not, uh, this is not, how to say that? Do we expect to have the same mileage? And the answer will be no. All of these are guess. Okay. The answer is no, Toyota Prius. Is not a full gas car. The technology is different. Okay, but if you compare among uh, hybrid, uh, hybrid, hybrid cars like Prius, and I think there are some others uh, like Leaf, Leaf, like Leaf. I think that's from I forgot what's what brand is that. Uh, then yeah, you will see that the same rule applies that the heavier the car, the lower the mileage. Okay, that's why the what uh, this hybrid uh, cars actually fighting for, they try to get a better technology such that uh, first, the, the battery can last longer. Second, the battery is actually lighter. Third, the power is actually stronger. Okay, at least for city car. So you see Prius is not a car you want to drive uh, for camping, for example, no. No, you don't want to use Prius. I, I drive a Prius, by the way. Okay, I drive a Prius. If you ask me, Thomas, let's go to Vegas, and uh, I'll be happy. Why? Prius is very, very safe. Uh, safe in the sense, uh, in the sense that very uh, efficient when it comes to gas. Okay, but if you try to say, hey, you know what? Let's go for hiking, uh, and use your Prius there. Prius there. I don't think Prius can even run. <laughs> in those places why the 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 uh, what's what you call that the the pool is actually very weak like it goes from zero to 100 in more than let's say in more than 15 seconds instead of like seven or eight seconds you know it's it takes long time the, the pool is very very weak very very weak okay but uh I've, I've been driving that for more than five years so i get used to it <laughs> okay i get used to it. you want to pass me just pass me fine Okay, in the end, I know that I save my gas and I do my part to reduce global warming. Okay, now going over furthermore. Okay, using part C, using part C. So part C, what is the residual? What is the residual? It will be Y minus Y prime. That is 20 minus 20.27957. That's negative 0 0.27957. That's the residual. Okay, what is the coefficient of 
correlation. This is the coefficient of correlation. As you can see, it's negative, right? It's negative, which means as the weight increases, then the mileage will decrease. Now, coefficient of determination, like 71, approximately 71% 71 of the mileage is actually determined by the body weight, okay, the weight of that car. Okay, so uh, it's not the only determinator, okay? Body weight is not the only determinator, but uh, we see that uh, body weight determines, 70% uh, of the body weight determines how the mileage increase or decreases. Okay, now you see the R is negative 0 0.84. That's actually a pretty strong relationship. Okay, so those car manufacturer, especially for regular car manufacturer, they strive to make the weight smaller. That's why then we start having uh, what you call that uh, smart for two, maybe. Okay, smart for two, uh, they try to reduce the weight and hopefully can get a better uh, miles per gallon. Okay, and this is two examples that I want to go over with you and uh, get ready with these kind of questions in your test. Okay, now let's go further into details. Let's go further into details. Now I will go back to these stats. Let's take a look. The data is between 2000 for the X, that's 2,900 to 4,000 something, 4,800. So let's go to the window. The X minimum is 2,900. And then the maximum is 4,700. The X scale, let's make it every 100. Okay, the Y minimum is, what's that? Six, let's make it 16 and the maximum is 27. 16, 27, 16, 27, and the Y scale is one. Let's graph it. So that's what it looks like. Let's screenshot that. Let me put it here. So using this scattered plot, you can tell that uh, the linear regression line is approximately like this. Okay, the further, the more you increase the weight of the car, then the smaller the mileage. Okay. Now we're supposed to do the scatter plot first before uh, we actually look for the linear regression line. Now, furthermore, the technical, some technical explanation. Here's what may happen. I want you to know that linear regression is being used. for uh, climate change. Okay, now in my opinion, uh, not supposed to, why? Because climate is actually periodical. Climate is periodical. Every 300 years, we have mini ice age. Every 5,000 years, we have medium ice age. And every 100,000 years, I think we have a major ice age. Okay, now the thing is using the frame of only couple years, only the frame of couple years. If you look at this here, you will see that in 100 years, the temperature will be being so high. You see what I mean? Okay, but actually the prediction we have in 1980, 
uh, at that time we say well global warming the end of the world will be 2020 apparently we are in 2021 right now okay yeah i mean there are a lot of prediction there uh, on global warming using linear regression and that's not appropriate uh, two problems with that is that a climate is periodical now i'm not saying that there's no uh, global i'm not i'm not saying that uh, uh, climate does not change no that's not what i'm saying climate does change but we cannot use linear regression to predict something periodical okay you cannot use the temperature that happens in january february march in which the temperature tends to increase to say something about let's say november okay no if you use data from january february march then you can use this only to predict what happened next year around this time okay but you cannot extrapolate that to november especially we know that the temperature is actually getting warmer toward summer and then going down again, right? You see, okay. Now, so oh, it's it's not about, I'm not, I'm not going to use linear regression here to criticize climate change. No, that's not my point. I mean, you, uh, I do believe climate change happens, but using linear regression to predict that is not appropriate. That's what I'm saying. Okay, and that's why I buy. That's why I buy Prius, right? I try to do my part. Okay, uh, so here's the thing: things that we need. I'm I'm going to be technical right now, right? So uh, things that I need to warn you ahead when to use linear regression. Okay, you can use linear regression after you do the scatter plot. And it shows that there is a trend. Now the trend may not be very, very clear. It's not like this. The trend is like this. No, no, that's way too strong. But sometimes we don't need a very, very strong correlation. Like something looks like this will be reasonable. Okay, just make sure that, just make sure that if you have this kind of this kind of uh, trend, then you only use your linear regression for this x interval. Not further, not further. Why? Because the data that you have available only here, and from there you get approximately this linear regression line. Okay. Now that linear regression line only valid for the x that is in this interval, not greater than that, not greater than that, no. We can predict, we can predict the height of somebody based on the, the age, you know, right? Especially uh, for example, from five years old to let's say 20 years old. We know that the older you are, the taller you are before you reach, let's say, uh, 25 years old right but after that we go flat let's talk about uh, the height okay so the height of uh, teenage increasing and it gets maximum i'm not sure but let's say 25 years old and then it actually grow, uh, grows slower eventually it goes flat i think my height has not changed since 20 years ago and then i do expect that eventually my height getting lower that's when I start losing bone density. Does it make sense? Okay, now the thing is, if you use the first couple years of my life uh, between, let's say between three years old to 10 years old, where the the correlation between the age and the height is positive and you try to extrapolate how much will my height be when i'm 80 years old you know that will be very very float you know no no it is not increasing like that it won't be it won't be 
nobody in their right mind will say that oh, it will be linearly, you can regress that linearly up to 90 years old, 80 years old. No, that's abusive. You can't do that. Why? Because your data is only from three to 10 years old. How can you use that to predict uh, 80 years old? But Thomas, we have more data after that. Yes, go ahead. Now, the thing is like, if you have more data, you will see the data is not like that. It will be approximately like this and eventually go down. So if, we, if you really want to go that far, linear regression is not appropriate. I think in this case, uh, the more appropriate one is actually quadratic regression. So you, instead of predicting using a line, you predict that with a quadrat a parabola. Okay. Now, but we don't do that though. We don't do that. We don't do that. Uh, especially at our level, or even once one one step higher in statistic, instead of doing quadratic. Uh, regression, what we tend to do, we break it up into, okay, during this stage, it tends to be increasing. During this stage, it tends to be increasing just a little bit. So you do linear regression here, linear regression here, linear regression here, another linear regression here. Because the way you think is like a parabola basically built by some segments anyway. Right? And you don't expect that uh, eventually uh, somebody's height decreasing tremendously between 80 to 90 years old. No, it won't happen anyway, right? So we try to adjust our model to the fact. We do not adjust the fact with the model simply because the reality does, does not fit what we predict doesn't mean the reality is wrong. In fact, the reality never wrong. That's the reality. Our prediction is the one off. Okay, so things that you need to be aware of is when to use this. Okay, depends on the data. If your data is clearly has a linear trend, then you can use that linear regression, but then you can only use that to re regress to predict in this interval or a little bit more, a little bit less. That's okay, but not too much more, not too much more. Okay, that's the, the mistake of using linear regression to predict, for example, uh, how much our earth will warm up in the next, let's say 100 years, but while the data you have only 20 years, let's say the data you have only from 1970 to 2020. So uh, that's 50 years, right? And then you try to say that, uh, uh, what happened in 2100. No, that's way too far. That's way too far. That's not valid. You may use another model, but definitely not linear regression. That's my warning. Okay. The thing is, there are so many students, they just learn a little statistic with some linear regression and they apply that idea and think they will have the model. You don't need to go far. You don't need to go far using the data you have here. Okay, split it into half 1970 going to uh, year 2000. Okay, get the linear regression equation using that information and see if your linear regression information fits the number you get from 2020. No, it's already off. It's already off means no, your linear regression doesn't work. Okay, using your own data against your own data, using your own data to create linear regression and using this linear regression, see what happened in 2020. Okay, what is your Y hat compared to your Y in 2020, the temperature, let's say. You will see it's already off. Now, if that's the case, it's already off, what makes you think that in 2100, it will be accurate? No, it's not, okay? There could be another model, okay? That's why I say that uh, you want to study more about climate change, study more statistics, okay? No, I'm not anti-science, I'm for science and I'm in science major, okay? So no, I'm not saying that uh, climate change, a lot of models out there is uh, the model was actually based on linear regression, which is not appropriate, okay? 
Now you cannot use linear regression for, for example, like what I said earlier, the height of a person based on age. Why? Because we know that from two years old to let's say around 20 years old, the, the height is actually increasing fast, basically uh, during teenage. But after that, it gets flat and flat. And eventually you start getting uh, some uh, bone, loss, uh, bone loss around when you are around 50 or 60 years old. Okay, so even if you are from two to 10 years old, cannot predict what happened to 80 years old, what makes you think you can use that to predict what happened 100 years from now? No, that's abusive. Okay, that's abuse of information. The proper way to do that is if your data is from two years to 10, 20 years, that's what you can use between two years to 20 years. So you can, you may be able to use this for, okay, then what happened when that person is 21 years old or 22 years old, then you will not be still too far away, right? Okay, but further than that, the trend may not hold anymore. Okay, so start with scattered plot to see what interval it is appropriate to use, uh, use certain trend. Okay, now notice that I start for the height of a person compared to the year, right? I start from two years old, three years old. Okay, we don't start from babies. We don't start from, hey, when that person is one month, one week, one month, one year, how will that change? No, okay, but this is, this is not an appropriate way. It's not appropriate. Appropriate. Okay. Now, need modification. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. The science is there we have regression for periodical change. And we do see some trend that uh, uh, global warming is actually happening, but it is not as extreme as what most models says uh, in the past, around like around 10 years ago. No, it is, it, it, we found out that it's actually not that valid anymore. But at the same time, we keep on updating what we know. Okay, so we use science, we, uh, we update, we modify so that the information we get uh, and the, the regression we get, it doesn't have to be linear, uh, actually more and more uh, compatible to the reality. Okay, oh, by the way, do you realize that because of this pandemic that we actually drive less, especially in the middle of last year? And they say that uh, there is one city in Asian country, one city in the Asian country, and throughout the year, the feasibility never exceeds, never exceeds uh, five kilometer. There's a city whose pollution is so bad that the feasibility never exceed five kilometers. But because of the pandemic and lockdown, the feasibility suddenly increased to 50 kilometers. So you see that uh, is, does pollution actually affect the feasibility? Yes, that one for sure. Uh, does it affect the temperature? I believe so. You know, I believe so. But of course, that's a, a claim that we're supposed to uh, test, right? I, but I believe so. You know, so if you ask me as a, somebody who believes in science, should we go on with this uh, learning, <laughs> distance learning? Well, everywhere, everything through internet so that we don't need to drive. That's what I prefer, you know. But of course, uh, if it doesn't help my student that much, and we need to find a better way, okay? But uh, no, I'm not singling out climate change. I'm not, I hope I have to emphasize that. I'm not singling out climate change, okay? 
no, I'm not sing singling out climate change, but that's actually one of the case that commonly, where commonly linear regression being applied while it is not appropriate. Okay. Uh, you can use linear regression, but only within the interval of data you have. Okay, from here to here, you cannot extrapolate that too far away. Okay, uh, I guess this is where I will stop for linear regression. Uh, if you want to know more about linear regression, feel free to watch my lecture video. Uh, but what I want to emphasize is that on Wednesday, you have a test and it will be from four o'clock to seven o'clock. Okay, can I come at 7.30, Thomas? Yes, you, ca you can, but you know that formally our class actually start from seven, uh, from four and ends at seven. That's why I am, it is possible and I have all the right to start a test at four. Okay, why don't you just do that with uh, the other test, Thomas, so that we have extra time? Well, because the test is supposed to be only for two hours. This time, because a lot of writing, I give you three hours, okay? I give you three hours. It's doable within two and a half hours with all the writing, making, make things, everything nice. Of course, some writing, but if you get used to it, uh, you don't even need to think too much. Okay, from four o'clock to seven o'clock, please uh, uh, check in. Start. We. I think I will start the check in at three fifty. Okay, then that's for today. See you on Wednesday.